بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين <تصفيق> بارئ الخلاق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد <تصفيق> اللهم صل على وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته المنتجبين قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخرين صدق الله العلي العظيم <تصفيق> Dua that we began last night and as we mentioned yesterday that this verse this holy verse that is revealed in Surah Al-Baqarah it comes after the verses on the holy month of Ramadan introducing the holy month of Ramadan and the prescription of fasting <clears throat> thus we are in the holy month of Dua we are all in need of of dua we all have a need that we are all praying for and hence we continue in our journey and discussion on dua sometimes for those who apply for let's start by giving an example and we'll dive into our topic sometimes those who apply for citizenship they come from abroad, they're immigrants, <clears throat> they arrive into Canada, and they apply for citizenship. And it's, it becomes a very long and difficult process. You've fulfilled all the requirements, you've gone through all of the steps and procedures, you've done all of the paperwork that is required of you. <clears throat> Yet, you still don't receive a reply. You're not rejected, nor are you accepted. For some reason, your application is delayed. For some reason, you're still not answered, and you don't receive your citizenship. Very similarly, some du'as are delayed. We perform the right steps. Last night, we talked about the right steps and the etiquettes of du'a. How do we go along in saying a proper du'a by beginning beginning with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, with mentioning praise of Allah, with sending salawat upon the Prophet and his family, by asking Allah <clears throat> to give us our hajjah for the sake of the awliya, for the sake of the infallibles, and so on and so forth. If a person follows all of this, all of these etiquettes and protocols and manners, yet their dua is delayed i don't say rejected because there are some du'as that are rejected and there are some du'as that are delayed instead of happening at the moment they are delayed for a while what is the purpose what is the reason why is it that my du'a is not answered immediately and it's delayed for a a while there's a hadith a very important hadith <clears throat> by amir al-mu'minin alayhi salam he says la don't lose hope if your dua has been delayed don't lose hope God's giving is according to your intention perhaps You've been delayed the answer to your dua only so that you may be reward, iman, rewarded immensely. Your reward multiplies. Or perhaps you ask Allah for something and you're delayed because Allah is preparing something better for you. Allah has something better in store for you either now or later on but we don't realize it 
Some, some of us, we're like children. Have you seen children in a toy store? When they see toys, they want a specific toy and they want it immediately. That same day, they can't wait. You can't tell them, let's wait for another week or two. Some adults, they become like children with Allah Azza wa Jal. They have a specific haja, a specific dua, and they want it immediately. Perhaps that is not good for us. Allah says, perhaps Allah is replacing you with a better outcome later on. Oh, sorry for Ank, Lima Hua Khayron Lek. Or perhaps the dua is not accepted or delayed because it is better. It is better. I don't know what is good for me. At the end of the day, I'm an ignorant human being that is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something that I deem appropriate for myself. But Allah knows what is more appropriate for me. Perhaps you ask for something from Allah Azza wa Jal and that which you ask for is detrimental to your faith. It is detrimental to your religion, to your faith, to your iman. And we don't know it. We don't know. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to extend, to expand. I ask Allah to expand my business. Perhaps expanding my business will destroy my faith. I will come less often to the masjid. I will pay less attention to my salah, to my faith, to my religion. So just because our dua is delayed, it doesn't mean that Allah is not hearing us. No, Allah hears us, but He knows when to give our haja. At the right moment, at the right time. The delay has a purpose, has a reason. Perhaps it is better for us. Perhaps Allah is delaying us for a better outcome for us. Like, this is one reason. Another reason, we have a hadith that say sometimes Allah, when He loves a person, He will tell the angels that this is a voice that I love. Don't give Him His desire. Don't give Him His desire. Why? Because I want to hear Him again and again and again. And there are some who Allah does not want to hear their voice. He does not desire to hear their voice. As soon as they speak, Allah says, give him his desire. Let him stop speaking. Enough. I don't want to hear of him. Give him his desire. Let me give you an example. It's like a, a cute child. A, you come to the masjid and you see this beautiful child and you want to play with this child. So you take out your subha and you want to give it to the child, but you don't. You want the child to come closer and come closer and come closer so that you may embrace the child and there are some annoying kids you give them the toy and, and you tell them you know get lost I don't want to see you this is the same with Allah Azza wa Jal and those who speak to him sometimes Allah delays our dua because he wants to hear our voice he wants to hear our munajat he desires to hear our voice other hadith tell us Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam he tells us that sometimes the road to acceptance so the acceptance of our dua is open, but we create road, road hazards. What are those roads, road hazards? Our sins. Our sins. Our sins are road hazards. Amir al-Mumineen salam says, لا تستبطئ إجابة دعائك وقد سددت طريقه بالذنوب Sometimes we delay the acceptance of our dua. Our dua should be answered immediately but we delay the process how by committing sins let me give you an example if there is a merchant you just bought a house and you need a loan for example you need a million dollar loan to purchase a house and there's a wealthy community member that you know that is willing to give you a loan and you ask him for the loan and he said sure give me Three, four days, and I will think about it, and I will come back to you. In these two, three days, wherever you go, you gossip about him, you talk about him, you backbite about him, you speak ill of his children, of his wife, of his business, and then you expect him to give you the million dollar loan within three days. Obviously, that's not going to happen. I, he's either going to reject you altogether, or the process will be delayed to three weeks to three months because he's not saying anything good from you. You sabotaged. You sabotaged your own loan. 
by your own hands. It's the same thing. Thus, <clears throat> a, dua, a, a dua can be delayed. Just because a dua is delayed, don't assume that it is rejected. Don't assume that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has rejected your dua and will not answer no. We have a hadith that says Musa alayhi salam and his brother Harun when they prayed against Fir'aun. They prayed against Fir'aun when Fir'aun was massacring the Israelis in Egypt, Bani Israel. He was massacring them. He was an oppressive tyrant, an oppressive ruler. Musa and Harun, they pray against him. Allah says, we've answered your dua. Qala, qad ujibat da'watukuma. I have answered your call. But when was, when did Fir'aun die? They asked Allah to punish Fir'aun and to kill Fir'aun. Allah says, I've answered your call. When did Fir'aun die? After 40 years. After 40 years. The Imam says, Imam Sadiq, he says that when Musa said his dua until the day that Fir'aun died, it took 40 years. Imagine if it takes 40 years for the dua of two prophets to be answered, how long is my dua and your dua going to take? It requires patience. Ultimately, it's in the hands of Allah. I can't dictate to Allah to tell him what to do. He knows best. He knows best. One of the companions of Imam Sadiq, he asks him, يُسْتَجَابُ لِلرَّجُلِ الدُّعَاءِ ثُمَّ يُؤَخَّرُ He says, is it possible that the dua of a believer is accepted, but it's delayed, but it's postponed? He said, نَعَمْ عَشْرُونَ سَنَةً Sometimes it's delayed for 20 years. 20 years it's delayed. But we, we're in a rush. وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولًا We human beings, we're hasty. We want, you know, we're, we're like children. We all have that child in us that we want our hajah immediately. Immediately. No, we don't know. I know couples who didn't have children for a year, three years, five years, ten years, sixteen years. I know a couple who waited for sixteen years until they had a child. Allah knows best. We can't complain. We can't object. Allah knows best. At the, end of the day, at the end of the day, Allah accepted their dua. But after 16 years, for some it's 16 days, for some it's 16, 16 months, and for some it's 16 years. At the end of the day, it's in the hands of Allah. It requires patience. It takes patience. Salah ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. These are du'as that are delayed. There are du'as that are rejected, flat out rejected. Allah says no. Why? Because He knows best. Because it's not for our interest. There's a, 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 a verse in Az-Zabur, the palms of David. The Imam tells us, Allah Ta'ala, Allah stated in the palms of David, Ibn Adam, تَسْأَلُنِي فَأَمْنَعُكَ لِعِلْمِي بِمَا يَنْفَعُكَ Oh, the son of Adam, you ask me, but I don't give you because I know what is best for you. It's like a child that wants candy, that wants sweets. <clears throat> and parents sometimes have to say no. When they say no, because they hate the child or because they love the child, because they know what is good for the child, what's in the best interest of the child, the child doesn't know. The child, if we allow our children, they'll drink Coke from morning till night and they'll have sweets and candy and junk food from morning till night. But a parent has to say no. They have to say no. There has to be law and rules and regulations. Why? Because it's best for the child. I don't give you, I don't fulfill your desire and wish because I know what is good for you. And then you insist, you insist, you insist. I say, خلاص, okay, I will give you what you want. And then when I give you what you want, you take what I gave you, what I give you, and you use it against me. You use it to disobey me. How many times does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us something and we use that to disobey Him? How ugly is this? 
Awad means this. And it's very similar to the dua of Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Arafah. He says, Oh Allah, did you not give me my eyes, my ears, my tongue, my hands, my feet? Are these all not your gifts to me? And did I not use all of them in your disobedience? I use my eyes to disobey Allah. I use my ears to disobey Allah. I use my tongue to disobey Allah. I use my hands and my feet to disobey Allah. The things that He gave us as a gift, we use the same exact gifts to disobey Him in His disobedience. فَأَهُمُّ بِهَدْكِ سَتْرِكْ And then I decide on exposing you, on punishing you. فَتَدْعُونِي فَأَسْتُرُوا عَلَيْكَ And then you pray that I cover for you not to expose you so I'd, I don't expose you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very patient with us. We are, we are nagging human beings. We nag like, like children. And Allah is very patient with us. He deals with us. Every day we ask for something new. And when, we, when He gives us, we use it to disobey Him. There's another hadith by Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. He says sometimes Allah rejects a dua that we say even if we're asking for something good but Allah rejects for example oh Allah grant us hajj this year I'd like to go to hajj I want to go to umrah I want to go for ziyarat al-arba'een in Karbala I'm not asking for any wealth any money nothing worldly I'm asking for something that is related to akhirah, something that will benefit me and my akhirah, and still Allah rejects. Why? Why? Because Allah says, if I were to give you that which you asked for, and you went to hajj, and umrah, and ziyarah, and you begin to feel arrogant. You say, alhamdulillah, I did a, a piece of worship. I worshiped Allah. Allah chose me and didn't choose anyone else. It comes to our ego. Sometimes our ibadah comes to our ego. I feel I've done a lot. I've done so much. I'm the one that prayed salat al layl. I'm the one that gave sadaqah. I'm the one that gave charity. I'm the one that went to ziyarah. Ego, my ego is boosted. And I become proud and arrogant. Allah wants me not to become pride, not to have pride and arrogance. He does not give me my dua. He does not answer my dua. He says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى يَقُولُ إِنَّ مَنْ عِبَادِي مَنْ يَسْأَلُنِ الشَّيْءِ مِنْ طَاعَتِي لِأُحِبُّهُ Sometimes my servant asks me an act of obedience so that I love him more. فَأَصْرِفُ ذَلِكَ عَنْهُ لِكَيْ لَا يُعْجُبُهُ عَمَلُهُ But I don't give him so that he, is, he does not become proud of his deed. You see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinks of us and wants the best for us. طيب. صلى على محمد وعلى محمد. A lot of us in the masjid, in gatherings, we tell people, نسألكم الدعاء. نسألكم الدعاء. Pray for us. Pray for us. Don't forget me in your dua. Don't forget me in your dua. Should we do this? I've seen some people that say, why do you ask people to pray for you? You pray. The door of dua is open. And the door of acceptance is open. Why do you ask others to pray? Why do you consist, constantly say, Nas'alukum du'a? Please don't forget me in your du'as. Why? You ask. Should we ask people to say a du'a for us? Or no, this is a bad habit. No, no. This is a good habit. This is not wrong. This is a good habit. Praying for others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will most likely do me good if someone else prays for me, not when I ask for myself. Perhaps if I pray for myself, that dua might be rejected because it's selfish, maybe it's not good for me. But when I do a dua for others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts. Rasulullah says, لَيْسَ شَيْءٌ أَسْرَعْ أَسْرَعْ إِجَابَةٍ مِنْ دَعْوَةِ غَائِبٍ لِغَائِبٍ There is no dua faster in being accepted than Someone performing a dua to someone who is not with you, who's absent. Someone who's absent. My brother, my sister, my cousin, my friend, they're absent, they're not with me, but I pray for them, Allah answers. 
One day, Musa alayhi salam, Allah tells him, Ya Musa, ad'uni ala lisanin lam ta'asini fi, aw lam ta'asini bih. Oh Musa, pray to me with a tongue that you never disobeyed me with. Musa says, how, my Lord? How do I pray to you? Of course, Musa is infallible. We believe that Musa is infallible. But this, you know, these hadith that the Imam asked for forgiveness, that this is all for us. This is all for us to teach us. So Allah tells Musa that pray to me with a tongue that you've never disobeyed me with. Musa says, how? Which tongue? I've, I've disobeyed you with this tongue. How can I pray to you with a tongue that I've never disobeyed you with? He said, Id'uni ala lisani ghayrik. Ask a fellow mu'min to pray for you. That is a tongue that never, dis you never disobeyed me with that tongue. It's the tongue of someone else. Have someone else pray for you and I will answer. Thus we should be in the habit of praying for one another. I when I pray for someone else, that dua will most likely be accepted. When someone else prays for me, that dua will most likely be accepted. Al Imam al Baqir says, يَبْدُعُ بِالدُّعَاءِ لِأَخِيهِ فَيَقُولُ لَهُ مَلَكٌ مُوَكَّلٌ بِهِ آمِينٌ وَلَكَ مِثْلُهُ When you pray for a fellow mu'min, the angel that accepts du'as will say, Ameen, and you shall have the same. Without asking for yourself. Just ask for, for others, pray for others, and the angel will say, and you shall have the same tayyib. There are du'as that we are told are certainly accepted. They will not be rejected. There are certain du'as that will certainly be accepted. Whom? Thalath, Imam Sadiq says, Thalath du'awat la yuhjabna anillah ta'ala. There are three types of people, their dua will certainly be accepted and they will not be rejected. Whom? Dua ul walidi li waladih. Dua ul walidi li waladih. Ida barrahu wa da'watuhu alayhi ida aqqah. The dua of a father. Do you have a father alive? Cherish his dua. Cherish his prayers. The dua of a father for his son and against his son. Both ways, both ways. When a father says, my son, may Allah bless you. May Allah give you tawfiq. May Allah give you success. This dua is accepted. And if he disobeys his father, he hurts his father and Allah, and he displeases his father and his father says a dua against him, this is also accepted. This is one. Two, wa al and the dua of a, an oppressed against his oppressor. And the dua of the oppressed for those who support him, those who stand with him. So the dua of an oppressed for and against. For the one who supports him and against the one who oppresses him is accepted. And number three. وَسَاهُفِينَا And any mu'min that asks for help from fellow mu'mineen and you're able to help, you're able to stand with him, support him, stand by his side, that dua is accepted. The dua, Rasulullah says that the dua of a father for his son is sharper than the sword. دُعِيَّاكُمْ وَدَعْوَةُ الْوَالِدِ فَإِنَّهَا أَحَدُّ مِنَ السَّيْفِ the dua of a father for his son is sharper than a sword. Make sure your father doesn't say a dua against you. Don't displease your father. And your father says, may you not see good in life. I saw a father once in front of me in my own eyes. He said, may my son not see any good. Two or three days later, the son had a surgery. I saw this with my own eyes. He needed a surgery. He fell ill and he needed a surgery. Be careful. The dua of a father is sharper than a sword. Also, the dua of children, innocent children. Dua o atfal ummati, Rasulullah says, Dua o atfal ummati mustajabun ma lam yuqarifu al The dua of children, because they're innocent, 
They're innocent. They have innocent hearts. They haven't committed sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer their dua. If you see children, don't take their dua lightly. When we have dua kumail, dua luftitah, bring our children. We have to bring our children. Let them participate. Let them say ameen. Their dua is accepted. Until they begin committing sins. When they begin committing sins, they become just like you and I. Their dua begins to become delayed. And also, the dua of a person who is not appreciated. For example, you have someone in the community who serves the community, who serves the people, who serves fellow mu'mineen. He does good, but he is not appreciated. Like most prophets. You know, prof most prophets who prayed against their, their nation. Why was their dua accepted? Because they were not appreciated. He says, the hadith says, مَنْ أَحْسَنَ إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ فَلَمْ يَقْبَلُوا He who does good to a group of people, but they reject him, فَلَمْ يَقْبَلُوهُ بِالشُّكْرِ أَوْ يُقَابِلُوهُ بِالشُّكْرِ فَدَعَى عَلَيْهِمْ إِسْتُجِيبَ لَهُ فِيهِمْ And they do not, they're ingrateful to him. They don't show him kindness for his good deeds. If he says a dua against them, his dua will be accepted. His dua will be accepted. Now, I have to summarize because time is being, time is... Uh, we're short on time, and there's plenty of material here. There's a beautiful hadith by Imam Sadiq salam. He says that some individuals, their dua are rejected because of them. Because they're not asking for the right dua. Who? He says, Arba'un la yustajab lahum dua. There are four types of people, their dua will be rejected. They'll not be answered. Whom? Ar-rajul jalisun fi baytih yaqul ya rabbi rizuqni. فَيَقُولُ لَهُ أَلَمْ أَمُرُكَ بِالطَّلَبِ A person who sits at home, has the ability to work, has the ability to make a means of income, a means of living, but says, oh Allah, give me, give me, send me money, send me a wealth. Allah says, no, go out and work. Go out and work. Don't use the dua card. Don't use the dua card. Go and work. This is one. Two, وَرَجُلٌ كَانَتْ لَهُ إِمْرَأَةٌ فَدَعَى عَلَيْهَا فَيَقُولْ أَلَمْ أَجْعَلْ أَمْرُهَا بِيَدِكَ And a man, I think the sisters will love this hadith, a man who has a wife that hurts him and he says a dua against her. Allah says, no, I will not accept your dua. Why? If you don't like her, divorce her. Why do you say a dua against her? Some men, they say a dua against their wives. Oh Allah, you know, do this to her, do that to her. No, no, no. You don't need to say dua. You can divorce her. You can go separate ways. There's no need of saying a dua against your wife. وَرَجُلٌ كَانَ لَهُ مَالٌ فَأَفْسَدَهُ فَيَقُولْ يَا رَبِّ رزقني. And a man who had wealth, he had money but he destroyed it. Either in gambling or in the wrong investments. He didn't think logically, he didn't plan. He didn't ask for advice. He wasted his money. And then he says, Oh Allah, give me back my money. I want my money. Send me money. Allah will say, فَيَقُولُ لَهُمْ فَيَقُولُ لَهُ أَلَمْ أَمُرُكَ بِالِاقْتِصَادِ Did I not tell you to spend wisely and spend economically? Why did you waste your money? وَرَجُلٌ كَانَ لَهُ مَالٌ فَأَدَانَهُ بِغَيْرِ بَيِّنَ And a person who had money, but he gave it as a loan, without having witnesses. Without having witnesses and that money is gone. That person says, he denies that this was a loan. And so he will say, he will complain to Allah, فَيَقُولْ أَلَمْ أَمُرُكَ بِالشَّهَادِ Allah will say, did I not order you to bring witnesses and to write down the loan? And I conclude with this. Of course, I can go on, but because I see that time is running out rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam states saltu allah an la yastajib dua a habibin ala habibi i've asked allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to accept the dua of a beloved against his loved for example when a mother says a dua against her son or a husband against the wife or a wife against the husband. You know, sometimes we love certain individuals, but we rush 
to say a dua against them. Rasulullah says, I've asked Allah to make this dua void and invalid. When people that love each other, but they say a dua against one another, this dua is invalid and it is void. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer our dua and to grant us our hajat that have a benefit for us. And this is important. I wanted to mention that sometimes, sometimes we should not teach Allah what to give us. Sometimes we tell Allah, oh Allah, I want this specific individual. I want this job. I want this career. I want this university. I want this husband for my daughter. I want this girl for my, this wife for my son. Don't teach Allah. Don't teach Allah. Ask Allah for the best outcomes and let Him decide. Say, oh Allah, send the best wife for my son. Don't choose which wife. Send Allah the best husband for my daughter. Choose for my children the best occupation, the best jobs. Don't choose because Allah knows best. Perhaps that wife is not the right wife for your son. This husband is not the right husband for your daughter. Leave it to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah knows best. We don't know. We don't know. Perhaps we say a dua and it turns back against us. It turns against us. It backfires. And it doesn't benefit us. Not in dunya and not in akhirah. We leave it to Allah. We leave it to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. اللهم إني أسألك أن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر من الأمر المحتوم في الأمر الحكيم من القضاء الذي لا يرد ولا يبدل أن تكتبني من حجاج بيتك الحرام المبرور حجهم المشكور سعيهم المغفور ذنوبهم المكفر عنهم سيئاتهم وأن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر أن تطيل عمري في خير وعافية وتوسع في رزقي وتجعلني ممن تنتصر به لدينك ولا تستبدل به غيري لا تستبدل به غيري أعوذ بجلال وجهك الكريم أن ينقضي عني شهر رمضان أو يطلع الفجر من ليلتي هذه ولك قبلي تبعة أو ذنب تعذبني عليه ولأرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والعلماء والشهداء نقرأ سورة الفاتحة مع الصلوات